Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India mainly the combustion problem now so combustion problem of uh, essentially having the species conservation conservation equation equations rather and uh, energy energy equation course energy conservation equation. Um, so this is what we want to now focus our attention on we simply say uh, flow field uh, is prescribed and let us not worry about the two way interaction where we are assuming a, uh, a uh, density dependent temperature that influences the flow back again. Uh, the moment we will just say uh, as far as the combustion problem is concerned the flow field is prescribed and uh, the question is is it possible for us to now simplify um, this set of equations right. What do you mean by simplify how do you how do you want to simplify this well if you think about it the species conservation equations is something which contains the capital V the, the diffusion velocity get the species diffusion velocities which are in turn given by the multi component diffusion equation. So you now have these n equations um, relating to 3 n equations for the 3 components of this multi component diffusion vector equation okay and uh, that those are those are in x i's whereas this is in y i's you know have to have an additional a set of n equations to um, relate x i's and y i's so that is complicated enough. All right, and then you have this energy equation which has like lots of terms that are on the uh, right hand side, and uh, each of those terms has lots of terms in, in turn, and so on. So it's actually a very lo long uh, equation. Our goal, believe it or not, okay, at this stage, is to try to simplify these two sets of equations to look almost the same not even similar is that possible can we can we even dream up of making this set of equations and, and, and a soup bowl of additional equations that it comes along with uh, to look like an energy equation that is very long actually. So it is possible if you now make lots of assumptions right but the goal here is um, goal to simplify the above set of equations to reduce to to a common form right reduced to a common form in fact let me tell you what the form that we are looking for is say a operator L script L of something like an alpha I okay equal to omega and alpha so this is I equals 1 to n right. So obviously that is a species equations right species equations then let us suppose that we can now form a alpha t which is also equal to omega okay and this is the energy equation right and that is one equation. What, what we expect is alpha i should be related to y i in some way okay the, the, the primary unknown corresponding to the 
species equations y i being the mass fraction of species i and alpha t should be related to temperature in some sense okay or in a, in a fairly direct way. So long as we can actually establish those kinds of relationships and then say this stands for temperature that stands for species concentration then and then you now are able to write these two equations in this form okay then we can now form uh, form then we can form okay we can form beta i equals alpha i minus alpha 1 you pick the first one okay first of the alphas okay and then subtract that from all other alphas and then you form a beta i corresponding to that okay and uh, and uh, beta t equals alpha t minus alpha 1 you pick the first of these alphas that is okay all right and then subtract from alpha t to form a beta t okay. Now look for L the, the script L uh, to be a linear operator okay further now if you really think about it if you know if you know some basic fluid mechanics what you would expect is the nonlinear terms in fluid mechanics are primarily convec coming from the convective term in the momentum equation okay if you are prescribing the velocity field in the species conservation and the energy conservation equations the non the convective terms in those species e equations and energy equation are not not they are, they are not nonlinear because your velocities there are known the momentum equation you had a product of velocity times velocity derivatives and the velocity was an unknown any time you have a product of an unknown and its with itself or its derivatives then that shows up as a nonlinear term but in the species equation and the energy equation if your flow field is prescribed that constitutes a linear term with a variable coefficient or a non constant coefficient that is all okay. So as far as the convective term is concerned which typically poses the nonlinearity in fluid mechanics in the momentum conservation as far as the combustion problem is concerned we can expect it to be linear that is fine all right. It is the other nonlinearities that we will have to worry about like for example if you had a radiation term with a t to the power 4 or if you had this e to the minus e a over r u t right the, the, the exponential term of, uh, de, of the reaction rate depending upon temperature and so on those are the villains that we should be looking out for. But we expect that that should actually be on the right hand side okay the L itself could be linear. So if you now look for this L to be a linear operator then we get L of alpha 1 equal to omega but L of beta i equal to 0 and L of beta t equal to 0 here i going from 2 to n because you can now subtract one equation from the other right you, or you can try basically subtract the first equation from all other equations and then now form your pairs of alpha uh, alpha i minus alpha 1 or alpha t minus alpha 1 and then plug in the betas and the right hand side is the same for all of them. So if you now subtract one from the other you get a 0 right what is the advantage with zeros I really we really like zeros do not we right. So the moment you now have zeros the first of all it means that this really means that we are now looking at homogeneous equations right 
which are a lot easier to think about when mathematically speaking when compared to inhomogeneous equations where you have source terms influencing the, 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 the mathematical nature of the equations otherwise okay. So first of all you are dealing with homogeneous equations that is like a big boon but implicitly we are also thinking it does not have to be zeros but thank God the nonlinear term goes away. It was the right hand side that was nonlinear. We had this e to the minus e exponential of minus e by rt, which was a huge nonlinear term. I'm trying to get rid of this in most of the equations. That was posing this stiff problem, right? That was the one that was actually trying to vary in a um, highly nonlinear fashion. That means it becomes very sensitive within a very narrow range of temperatures, and you have to take like very very small steps in time or space, or both in order to try to capture that variation somewhere there near the flame and so on all those things we do not have to worry about for these equations. You still have that stuck in one equation representing this for the re representing the severity for, for the rest of the set and if you were to follow this then here we would we call beta uh, beta i and beta t as coupling functions because they couple alphas together okay beta i is couple alpha i and alpha 1 and uh, beta t couples alpha t and alpha 1 right. So these are called coupling functions so our goal is essentially to simplify the above set of equations to reduce to a common form that is L of alpha is equal to zero omega um, for both the species and the energy together and then form the coupling function so that we could actually get a homogeneous set of equations for a whole number of large number of equations except just one okay. Sounds very incredible uh, at this stage if you now think back on what the equations are but uh, the question is how do we simplify so this is the starting point right. So we will now have to make a lot of assumptions 11 assumptions to be precise okay which are mostly simplifying assumptions so we now make these assumptions. <coughs> and I want you to listen to this very carefully. There are 11 assumptions that we are going to make all right so it, it could be as if you can you can expect an exam question or a, a PhD qualifiers question what are the 11 assumptions of the schwab zeldovich formulation because they are the 11 assumptions <laughs> okay. So we will make those 11 assumptions number one number two whenever we make assumptions keep in mind we get into the habit of questioning those assumptions are they good assumptions or are they bad assumptions are we making them mainly because we want to simplify the matter right or are they just simplifying assumptions or are they physically tenable that means or can we justify them from physical grounds are they reasonable right we will have to go through that when we make those 11 assumptions. The third is there a way we can relax these assumptions some of them many of them all of them right so those will be your homework problems <laughs> right so I will try to point out to you which are the assumptions you can you can relax and has been relaxed in the literature okay and I will also point out to those literature uh, and, and then you can you can say well work out the Schwab Zeldovich formulation with this assumption relaxed that is like one particular question in an exam. <laughs> Okay. So if you, if you thought that you, you really mugged it up then the next question in the next exam will be work out the schwab zeldovich formulation with relaxing the other assumption so you can keep doing this <laughs> okay and, and, and it will be, be a pretty good piece of work actually okay. So do not don't take it lightly it is very important so uh, I am not going to relax all the assumptions I am not that crazy okay. So I uh, will point out some assumptions that can be uh, relaxed. So the first assumption that you are looking for is uh, negligible body forces 
we also should be looking for why we are making these assumptions right so and then I'll also point out to some things that we are not assuming as we go along so in, the, in that sense to, to, to that extent the formulation is general enough because we are not making assumptions for example to, 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 to tell you right away we are, do not have to make assumptions about constant CPs we could have temperature dependent species that are different for different species all right that is that is great that means you can actually get the adiabatic flame temperatures predicted fairly well and then your, your formulation should be able to show the temperature in, in your flow field so that is pretty good. Uh, here the reason why we want to actually neglect body forces is um, um, it shows up in your it shows up in this, in this set of equations it shows up in the multi component diffusion equation right. So our goal is to try to simplify the multi component diffusion equation to look like Fick's law all right so that we can directly substitute the Fick's law form of the multi component diffusion equation into the species conservation equation right away just like how we did it the first time for a binary mixture then we do not have to deal with the multi component diffusion equation separately anymore. So the question is what will allow us to simplify the multi component diffusion equation to look like fixed law you remember the multi component diffusion equation had four terms the first of those were the, was the one that was going to give rise to fixed law then there was a pressure gradient term then there was a temperature gradient term which was the Soret effect and then there was a uh, body force term so if you wanted to get rid of pressure, pressure uh, uh, gradient term uh, and then you have to get rid of the body forces term and then you have to get rid of the Soret effect okay so the first thing that we are trying to do here is to neglect body forces now if you get went back and actually looked at that particular term you had a Fi vector minus Fj vector so you do not necessarily have to neglect body forces altogether it was sufficient if the body forces were the same on all the species right so if not if not okay equal equal on all, all species that is the assumption that we are trying to make okay. Negligible Soret and Dufour effects terms involving DT comma I right <coughs> this is this is the Soret effect is actually neglected so that you can simplify your multi component diffusion equation into your fixed law uh, the Dufour effect actually shows up in the energy equation which also we try to neglect primarily the, the justification being DTI over rho Dij is typically fairly small it has one order magnitude less than unity all right therefore it, it, it is insignificant or negligible most of the time. Pressure gradient diffusion. pressure gradient I uh, should say negligible pressure gradient diffusion right Pre negligible pressure gradient diffusion this term was looking more like uh, uh, yi minus xi times grad p over p there are many ways by which you can neglect this one you simply say this term does not contribute a lot to the multi component diffusion equation right no matter how, how much it is you say it is very you now evaluate it and find that it is very small the other way of uh, uh, trying to get rid, of the, get rid of this term is to say that they have, you have equal molecular weights that means yi's are equal to xi's but that is a worse assumption than just saying that this is negligible right. The third way of actually trying to justify this is just the previous class we found that for low Mach numbers the pressure is almost a constant it affects only your flow field but it does not really get into your combustion field a lot right so as far as the combustion problem is concerned we could simply say the grad p is very small right that is the reason why we want to say the diffusion associated with it is even smaller right okay uh, so that is reasonable now 
neglect negligible bulk viscosity bulk viscosity and uh, um, viscous dissipation these are related but slightly different bulk viscosity effect can be neglected for incompressible flows when you are now looking at low Mach numbers we are now talking about uh, low um, uh, incompressible flows so you can say that the divergence is equal to 0 so you do not really have dilatation effects coming in so bulk viscosity the effect of bulk viscosity is negligible and this also shows up in the viscous dissipation if, uh, term and we are now saying the viscous dissipation itself is pretty small if you now do an order of magnitude analysis unless you are looking at uh, situations of uh, tribology like um, when you now have a um, um, two surfaces that are actually in very close clearances and you had a fluid in between like in lubrication and so on uh, or if you had like re-entry effects where your Mach numbers are so large and the boundary layer is so thin with a steep gradient effectively you are looking for very large gradients of velocity that is when viscous dissipation is significant otherwise you do not have to worry about it not typically in our in, in our application. 5 uh, negligible radiant heat flux right QR QR vector right. Now of course this is this is a, this is going to be a nonlinear term if it were present. So you're going to have a t to the power four, and t is an unknown. So you're now looking at a nonlinear uh, effect there. So try to get rid of it, okay? But of course, when can you when can when can you say this is okay? So long as you're dealing with a gaseous medium, this is reasonable, okay? But the moment you have things like surfaces, you have to think a little bit harder. So you, if you have surfaces you have to look for whether those surfaces are transparent or opaque or if they are closer to black if their emissivities are closer to black, black body emissivities right. So if that is the case then you cannot neglect this so um, not valid uh, not valid when in, in, in problems with phase interfaces right not valid in problems with phase interfaces well of course you will find in the literature there are lots of problems with phase interfaces that have been solved after neglecting radiant heat flux and you still get good results it is not it is not terribly bad okay but in general the radiant heat flux is significantly small you think about this you now look at a flame the fact that you are able to see the flame is because you have radiation coming and hitting you your eye all right and you are like wait a minute I could I could see the flame only because of radiation it is there how could I say how, how, how could I not uh, take that into account the answer is that is quite small okay in, in, in magnitude so you do not have to worry too much about this. Um, six. We assume a steady flow we did that when we were trying to do uh, on the low Mach number assumption okay so whatever we did the, in the previous class where we came to the conclusion that the pressure remains almost a constant for low Mach numbers is typically called the low Mach number assumption right. So the low Mach number assumption was actually derived uh, for steady flows which, which is something that we also uh, adopt over here the point I mentioned the other day was you do not have to do that. Okay, and similarly, we don't have to do that here here as well. Uh, you can relax this assumption can be relaxed. You should be able to uh, relax this assumption and derive a unsteady um, equivalent or an unsteady Schwab-Zeldovich formulation. Okay, that's a homework problem for you. Uh, and and uh, keep in mind, what are we looking for? We are looking for uh, a uh, a L the script L. Um, operator right that should be linear and uh, typically the, 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 the time derivative dou by dou t is a linear term it is not showing up any nonlinearity. So you should not have a problem 
with, uh, with, with unsteady uh, flows at all so you should be able to relax this assumption. Um, then we say binary diffusion coefficients coefficients of uh, all pairs of species right or equal that is uh, that is dij equals dij equals d not even saying that we have dij is equal to di that is to say we are not saying that the binary diffusion coefficients are the same as the multi component diffusion coefficients. Recall that the multi component diffusion coefficient coefficients are derived quantities whereas the binary diffusion coefficients are more fundamental okay which come from kinetic theory but we are saying here that all of them are going to be equal for all pairs of species and this is very important for you to be able to plug in your um, uh, multi component diffusion equation into a fixed law and then plug that into the species conservation equation. Otherwise what happens is you now have this xi is equal to um, sorry grad xi is equal to some, some, some coefficient times vi minus vj and you could derive fixed law only for a binary species binary mixture where again DAB is equal to DBA and since only two of them are there and they are equal it is just as good as this assumption and then you could have you could have obtained fixed law that is what we did before but here we have to get past that for a truly multi component mixture more than two species therefore this assumption is necessitated okay the question is is it okay the answer is not terribly bad typically you have to start worrying about this assumption if you are dealing with things like hydrogen as part of your mixture right. Let us say you had a mixture of hydrogen and hydrocarbon going through uh, uh, combustion then the, the pairs of species involving hydrogen may typically have a higher diffusivity when compared to others. And then that, that is markedly different whereas uh, if you are if you're dealing with most species of the order of the same molecular weights not necessarily equal you can expect that this assumption is a very reasonable assumption not, not bad at all okay. 8 low speed or low Mach number low Mach number um, this implies that momentum equation reduces to P is equal to constant to first order which means we could now say let me get a flow field that is prescribed I do not have to worry about solving for the flow field in, ad in addition to the combustion problem uh, so I am looking only at the combustion problem uh, so that, that is something that came, came from the previous class. 9 unity Lewis number right so question is what is Lewis number right so Lewis number Le is k is k divided by rho Cp d now keep in mind that d should really be like dij in reality all right so correspondingly you should have a lewis number that is like leij okay but many times as we have seen earlier the dij can be replaced by like a di that is like the multi component diffusion coefficient rather than the binary diffusion coefficient in which case again we will now have to recognize that le could be written should be written as a lei that means it is different for different species so you are looking at a Lewis number that should be really species dependent and many times 
uh, people talk about a fuel Lewis number or an oxidizer Lewis number that are distinct from each other right. So what is this Lewis number really telling us K over rho CP is the thermal diffusivity and Dij or D here is the mass diffusivity okay so in SI units K over rho CP is going to be like meter squared per second and the mass diffusivity also has the same units meter squared per second and therefore Le is a, is a non dimensional number which, which actually indicates a, the, the, the capability of a species to conduct heat just as well as it can diffuse right. So we are now looking at comparing the capability of the species to actually transport enthalpy as it can transport mass right so that they, they, they do not have to be necessarily the same right depends on how well it can conduct versus what its CP is in comparison to what, what how much it can diffuse itself as a mass right. Why would you want to now compare these two and what you are now basically saying is this should be equal to 1. This is a very 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 important assumption it can be relaxed that is a good news okay but it is a very important assumption why because our goal is to actually look at the species conservation equation and the energy conservation equation and try to express them in a single form. How do you hope to do that if you do not you don't expect the species to actually transport enthalpy just as well as it can transport the mass because in your these equations are essentially remember the convection diffusion reaction these are the three things and if you had some sort of an intuition you would say that omega stands for reaction not just because it is the symbol. But I have been saying that this is the one that is containing the nonlinearity in the Arrhenius term that is essentially from the reaction. So if you now say convection, diffusion, and reaction, and this is going to contain the reaction, then this is going to contain the convection and the diffusion. And sure enough, prescribing a velocity, you now simply have a non constant coefficient for the convective term coming from the flow field, and the diffusion term should both should be linear just as well as the convection term. So we expect this to turn out to be linear that means we are looking for two terms here both of them linear one of them coming from convection the other one coming from diffusion right. If now these two terms should look similar to similar for the um, species conservation equation and the energy conservation equation then we should be looking for the transport terms to be comparable. So if you now have a species which is actually diffusing so fast but it does not really conduct heat a lot that means it is having a non unity Lewis number less than 1 okay then the, the transport terms so the, the, or the diffusion terms in the species conservation equation and the energy conservation equation they are not going to match up all right you are going to have a problem. So the only way we can actually try to get these two together to look similar is if you now have a unity Lewis number. In fact in most of the earlier literature I would not I would say too early like as, as late as even the 70s or 80s or even now some, 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 um, um, some works or many theoretical works that are, that are getting published they would make a unity Lewis number assumption. And Sometimes when they relax this assumption and publish they would even put it in the title like they would say blah 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 for non unity Lewis numbers it is as if like it is a big achievement that they have done that, 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 they, that they relax this assumption right. So that, that indicates the importance of this assumption okay that is indicating the importance of this process of what is called as preferential diffusion when you now say the Lewis numbers are first of all not equal to 1 and not equal to each other. So if you now say preferential diffusion you now allow for a oxidizer Lewis number to be different from a fuel Lewis number for example right and sometimes 
you have this uh, analysis that is done where you now assume that the oxidizer Lewis number is unity but the fuel Lewis number is not unity or vice versa maybe okay. So many times you, you, you need this, this assumption in different ways but it is still possible for us to think of writing not exactly in this form of course but you will still be able to write something like a convection diffusion and reaction okay except that the diffusion terms alone may be different by a factor of the Lewis number if the Lewis number were non-unity and that would be like the counterpart of the schwab zeldovich formulation we may not be able to form coupling terms all right. So uh, it, it is possible to actually work with non-unity Lewis numbers and, and proceed in the, in the manner if you now make all the other assumptions relax this assumption and see what happens it is it, worth pursuing that okay. Then we assume a chemical um, changes occur in a single reaction step single reaction step sigma i equals 1 to n nu i single prime script m i gives rise to sigma i equals 1 to n nu i double prime script m i just one step we we do not we do not entertain uh, multi multi step chemi chemical kinetics okay that helps us in dealing with trying to split the enthalpy into uh, the formation enthalpy and the uh, sensible enthalpy and deal with the formation enthalpy term. So you now get a single heat release rate term because of the single step kinetics it is it's essentially what is happening is you now assume like there is only one reaction that is happening in the flame although there are lots of reactions that are happening but if you were to entertain many reactions each of those reactions is going to give rise to a heat release right and some of them could actually absorb heat so there is like a net heat release that you should be looking for whereas we want to deal with only one heat release rate term not multiple heat release rate terms okay so that that is what this, this assumption lets you do um, try relaxing this either okay so we, we will talk a little bit about that as we as we go along the eleventh assumption is a fairly straightforward assumption no external heat flux that is uh, q dot equal to 0 q dot is equal to 0 this was showing up as a solitary term only in the energy equation it was not there in the species equation so if you now keep this then it is not possible for you to make them look alike right so we have to get rid of this this is reasonable again okay you get into this kind of situation only in some oddball cases where um, you have to keep some externally heat generating um, mechanism or machinery within your domain all right that is like some electrical heating or nuclear heating or, um, or, or let us say arc heating or something of that sort which is not which is not due to the combustion all right therefore we do not have to uh, worry about this under most circumstances good. So we now went through the 11 assumptions now we go through the uh, algebra how do you crank the machinery to make make this look like we make make these two equations look alike so it's going to look it's going to involve some magic all right so you have to kind of watch out for how these manipulations happen and we'll go through this now and maybe in the next next hour as well and maybe by the end of then we should be we should be getting there to see whatever we are looking for Correct. The the equations can still be considered linear. If you now had like two species equations, you assumed a non-unity Lewis number, all right, but the the Lewis numbers were equal. 
right you now have two species equations which are still linear which can be where where you can still form the coupling functions all right and then you have the lewis number the, the equal lewis number for each of those still sticking together it's only that you can't look make it look similar to the energy equation so as far as the species equations are concerned they can begin to look similar right and i'm still saying i'm not having uh, uh, a unity lewis number i'm having non unity lewis number but non unity but equal you see so there there are, there are such conditions there are there are also other other situations where it's possible for you to um, deal with like saying one of the lewis numbers is equal to 1 but the other equal, other other lewis number is not equal to 1 there you try to couple um, that equation with the energy equation where the lewis number of that particular species is equal to 1 but you keep the other one okay so typically uh, we will in fact what we will find is in the problems that we deal with let's say we will want to do like a premix flame or a diffusion flame and so on in in, in, in due course our starting point will be the schwab zeldovich formulation okay at that time um, uh, we should look forward to seeing if we can relax the lewis number unity assumption for some of the species or uh, uh, or say equal lewis numbers but not not necessarily equal to one and so on the point i wanted to make was what you will find is we will pick and choose some equations to form coupling functions and not worry about the others all right so this will depend on the way you assume your lowest numbers all right so it is it's 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 pretty interesting the way we can deal with it okay so now given the situation we now start with the overall continuity equation um it simply leads to divergence of rho v vector is equal to 0 right we still deal with 3D we will have a vector form of equations so that means it is a, it's a three dimensional formulation nothing uh, no, no assumptions on that right now let us look at uh, energy equation with all the assumptions that we have made. Um, so no q dot um, viscous dissipation phi and uh, uh, dp over dt you get this dp over dt uh, only for compressible flows because we are now looking at a low Mach number situation you don't you shouldn't have to worry about this then uh, you have a rho v vector dot uh, del h is equal to del dot k grad t minus del dot rho sigma capital K equals 1 to n h k y k capital B k okay this is coming from your divergence q vector and q vector had k grad t okay k, k grad t uh, in fact minus k grad t and you had this this term and you had the Dufour effect and the QR you have we have got rid of the Dufour effect and the QR outside of the grad Q dot you had the uh, body force uh, work the, you had the um, viscous dissipation and you had the pressure work so all those all those have gone so we are left with only these two keep in mind what are we looking for we are looking for getting this equation to look like convection diffusion reaction okay. now the reaction rate term is actually embedded in here this is this is going to be now written as h is equal to sigma yi sigma sigma yk hk where hk is the specific enthalpy of species k which can in turn be written as delta h of k not plus the sensible enthalpy for that for, for that right and then the delta h of k naught term is the one that is going to contribute to the heat release so that is where the reaction term is coming from in the energy equation 
okay the job of the reactions in the energy equation is to give rise to the chemical heat release that is embedded in here right. So this contains both the convection term and the reaction term that we are looking for this is the diffusion term that we are looking for from an energy point of view this is the this is essentially the uh, energy transport term okay that is something that we have to deal with it is not something that we were looking for and it is not there in the species conservation equation okay but you do have a capital VK showing up in the species conservation which will now have to be replaced by a fixed law having a, a gradient YK so this, it's, it, this, is, this, this is going to be a little bit more involved than, 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 than it seems okay so now note that H is equal to sigma H YK YK HK all right now therefore sigma YK HK divergence rho V vector equal to 0 starting from here I just multiplied these two right and right hand side of this is equal to 0 therefore this should be equal to 0 now add the above to the energy equation right and then you have so what do you get if I can now add this to this which is essentially 0 okay I can now try to take the divergence out you see you have a rho v dot grad h here we have a this is h times divergence rho v so if you now add these two together we can get a divergence of rho v times the h you see so I can get this divergence of rho sigma hk yk and then what happens why did I do want to do that because I have a divergence of rho times this right I should now be able to com combine these two v plus capital VK right and I also note that this is like a divergence term and so if I now have a divergence that is outside I should now be able to write this also inside k gradient t equal to 0 now let us call this a keep this why would I want to do this because I am now going to begin to realize that hk can be written as delta h of k naught plus the sensible enthalpy all right delta h of k naught um, times yk times v if you now have this term I can now try to look for supplying the species conservation equation to get its right hand side to come and plug in here okay so I will now be able to write something like a the for the for the for the term that has the delta h of k not alone I should now be able to write this as like a sigma w k delta h of k naught so w k is coming from the right hand side of the species conservation which will now look which, which whose left hand side is this I plug the right hand side of that here right for only that term which has the delta h of k naught that will simply mean the chemical heat release rate term is nothing but the reaction rate term times the heat release from that reaction that is that is correct because a heat a reaction is going to give rise to a certain heat release per unit mass of the fuel or, or any of the reactants if you now multiply that by the rate of change of that species mass per unit time right then you should get the heat release the, the heat release rate so we will try to look for that manipulation soon so we now say species 
conservation can be written as divergence rho yi times v plus capital vi equals wi i equals 1 to n right now let us just start this staying this as b okay so what I am basically saying and I will stop stop so basically note that so note that hk equals delta hfk naught plus integral t ref to t cpk small cpk dt right so this is the this is the sensible enthalpy term this is the standard heat of formation therefore if we now plot this in here right in the energy equation and notice that you now have a rho yi v plus vi combination with the delta hfk wherever you have that you now put your wi well I, I, I guess I am sorry I missed, missed, missed uh, symbols so let us just have k instead of i capital k uh, right. So what you are looking for is whenever you have this combination you now try to put w k whenever you have delta h of k not over there and if you now split this then what is going to remain is only this term on the left hand side the right hand side is simply going to be delta h of k not times wk sigma of that so the energy equation energy equation becomes <coughs> becomes divergence of divergence of rho integral um rho we now say sigma uh, well actually I think I, I can get rid of the sigma for the first term if I now try to pull this v out and open up this brackets sigma hk yk will simply again be h and that will correspond to simply a Notice that we do not have a K over here because we basically summed over there plus plus so we are now looking at only the sensible enthalpy term kept on the left hand side so we now sum over the CPK becomes CP but then you have to keep the CPK as it is with the capital VK so we will we will we will, we will just do that um, sigma um, K equals 1 to N YK capital VK and then keep your sensible enthalpy term as it is with the CPK dt and then of course you also also have this minus k d t grad t that you have to keep minus k grad t and what we did was to keep get the um, the the standard heat of formation part to the right hand side and notice that that part alone actually stands for w k so you can now easily write this as minus sigma k equals 1 to n delta h of not k wk so this obviously is the chemical heat release term rate term because this actually tells you how much is the heat that is released right so this is actually like joules per kg and this is like kgs per meter cubed second right so if you now get rid, get rid of these two k kilograms this is the amount of heat released per unit mass of that species k and this is the the mass of species k that is getting converted per unit time per unit volume so together this will actually mean joules per second per meter cubed or watts per meter cubed you see so this is the volumetric heat release rate right 
So that is how and then you sum it, sum it over for all the species that are getting produced or consumed okay. So this effectively is now for the first time you are now beginning to see the chemical heat release rate isolated in the energy equation here okay this is a good point to stop. <coughs> 